Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more network automation and in this video what we're going to be doing is looking at Nornir again. So if you recall from the previous video on Nornir, we just had done some basic show commands. In this video, we're going to take it one small step further and introduce actual configuration changes via Nornir. Now the way I want this kind of series to go is to just gradually increase the complexity over time. This again is going to be a very, very simple video. We're just going to grab a text file, push out the configuration changes and that'll really be it. Over time, we'll start introducing filters and templates and just add up the complexity very, very slowly so that we're all on board and we all know what we're doing. So like I say, the plan for this video is just to grab a simple text file and use Nornir to push it out. Now, if you remember from Nornir, the past video, is that Nornir uses parallelization, which means that it can put out these commands automatically and concurrently. So effectively, we get some really sharp efficiency. Think of it as, well, do you know with... If you're, if you're an old school network engineer, you'll probably be familiar with the notepad. You would write some commands, copy paste, log into a device, paste it in. Log into the next device, paste it in. Log into the next device, paste it in. This is all we're really doing in this video, but think of Nornir as like a him, the best copy and paste ever because it can do it so fast, okay? So that's really the kind of layout for this video. And um, There's not going to be much more than that. I've got a little bit of a... I've got a Python script to help you generate your host file, just like I did in the Genie video. I'll show you that. But aside from that, that's going to be the video. It should be quite a short one, and that'll be it. So with that said, let's go and do it. Okay, so what I'll first do is show you my basic setup, just in case you're following on for the very first time. So the three files you need are the config.yaml file, the host.yaml file and the groups.yaml file, those are the basic essentials to get Nornir up and running. So let's look at them, okay? So cat config.yaml, and again, you can see it's a YAML file, you get the three hyphens at the top. Core num workers 100, this is just basically how many concurrent threads Nornir will have. I'm going to have it as 100. Inventory, it's a simple inventory. And here are the paths to where the host file is, the groups file is, and actually the default file I've removed. Again, you don't need to worry about that. Just think about, or just focus on the hosts and the group file. So this is the path where Nornir will find the hosts file. It will be home, IPv0, Nornir, host.yaml. Group file, pretty much the same, except it's groups.yaml. And you can see that if I do a uh, print working directory, you can see that this is actually the path we're in just now, okay? So if I do cat um, groups, in fact, there was vim it. Vim groups, you'll see it's a very, very simple um, configuration, and this will be up on my GitHub, so you don't need to worry too much about it. The real one which we're focusing on is the hosts.yaml, just gg to the top now, and again, you can see the three hyphens at the top to denote that it's YAML, and effectively, this is just a map of the network that's going to show, it's going to tell Nornir how to connect to the devices, what IP addresses, what's the login details, what is the platform, what's the OS, how is it going to interact with the device, okay, so this is all this is, it's basically the little roadmap which Nornir needs to go and make its changes. So I've got 10 devices, R1, the host name is the IP address of the first router, 192.168.31.11, the username is John, the password is Cisco because I've created an SSH connection on all the devices, Username John, privilege 15, so we escalate to privilege exec mode, and the password is Cisco. Okay, so that just iterates through every device. The only thing that's changing is the IP address. And what I've done is I've created, just like in the Genie video, a little script for you to generate your own um, host.yaml file with all the correct spacing. So like I say, just run it, and this will be on my GitHub as well. And like I say, if you want to change the basic details, let's say your name isn't John and your name is Stuart and you want the password to be class instead of Cisco and you would rather use a 192.168.1.something uh, something, and rather than having that many devices, you'd rather have 100 devices. You could just change it that way. And when it runs, it's going to generate that. So it's going to have 100. Oh, actually, how about I put the in there, that will help. <laughs> okay, so 192, 1.100, 1.99, 1.98, so on and so forth, okay? So that script will be up on the GitHub. Now, the real thing which I want to talk to you about is this runbook I've created. So, if we just vim runbook1, 
this is what we're going to use to actually push out the configuration changes via Nornir. So like the last time from Nornir import init Nornir, remember don't do it from Nornir.core, that's an old configuration, you don't use that anymore, okay? From Nornir plugins, functions, text, for import and print results, so we can actually print the result here, you can see that we're using that here, this module, and print title, so we can have a wee title at the top of the screen, okay? Now, the real important ones are the networking plugins, so from Nornir plugins task networking, we're going to import netmiko send config and netmiko send command. Now, netmiko send config allows us to make configuration changes. This is, a, this is effectively netmiko saying conf t and start making actual configuration changes. netmiko send command is for using show commands. That's basically privacy exec stuff. Show, run, show CDP neighbors, that type of thing, okay? So that's what, that's what you use for both of them. Now, in this runbook, I'm going to be making configuration changes and doing a show command afterward. So I'm importing both of them, okay? So that's the reason why both of them are there, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is nr, create this variable with init nornir and tell it the config file. That was the config file I showed you first, which tells me where my host file is, where my groups file is, so on and so forth, how many concurrent connections. Dry run equals true, it means that basically we're not going to commit the changes. And the part here we're going to get to is the interesting part. This is us defining our function, okay? So we've got def uh, defined a function called base config, and inside we've got an argument called IPv0. These can be called anything. Just keep the the references consistent, okay? So for example here, base config, okay? That's got to match what the task is in here. If I change base config to whatever anything I could call it, television if I wanted. If I call that television, make sure I write task equals television, okay? So don't get caught up in like base config as some special uh, some special value or some special name. It's just the name I chose, okay? Like a descriptive type thing because what the actual run book is doing, okay? So you can call it anything and you can call the argument anything. Just be sure that if you change the argument from IPv0 to maybe say, I don't know, Paul, this part here is going to be paul.run, okay? If you change this to Brian, it's going to be brian.run, okay? Um, and by the way, don't use these names. That's not very, <laughs> it's not exactly good programming practice to start just using uh, random people's names for all your arguments, okay? <laughs> so anyway, task equals netmiko send config. This is us basically calling the module up here. This is the one up here. This is so we can make configuration changes, okay? Now, rather than giving a string of configuration, uh, of, a rather string of commands to configure, all we're doing here is specifying a config file, okay? Now this thing here, config underscore text file, this is the actual name of the text file which I'm going to be pulling the commands from, okay? So this has got to match the name of the actual text file you're referencing, okay? Now if the config text file in this case is in the same directory as where you're running this, you can just do config.txt file. If it's in a different directory, be sure to specify the full path so Nornir knows how to find where the actual text file is. It will automatically look in the same directory where you're deploying the script. So in this case, I can just say config.txt file, but if you've got a separate wee folder for your text files, be sure to include the folder path in the name here, okay? So just be aware of that. Now the next thing is ipv0.run. This is where we're going to start using the show commands, hence we're using netmiko send command rather than send config because send command does show commands. And the command string is, is basically what is the show command we want to run. And the one I'm going to do after I push this config out is just a basic show run. That is it, okay? Now we get to the results. The result is going to be nr run and the task equals what the function is, which is up here. And then we're going to just print that title using the print title module and then print, res print results by using the print result module. And that is pretty much it, okay? So that's the basic configuration of, or rather the basic setup of the configuration. And we're just going to push this out and see how it looks, okay? So let's just go and do that just now. So if we just exit out that. So what I'll first do actually um, is I'll just show you that there's no real configurations on this. All I've got is a IP address, SSH connected and a VRF set up so that we've actually got this out of band management. So show run. The VRF there. Basic configurations. That is it, okay. And this is true of all the devices. I'll pick whatever, router 8 here. 
show run. So you can see you've just got the VRF and our basic setup for SSH. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's have a look at this text file which we're going to actually push out. So like I say, the run book referenced something called config.txt file. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at just now. Okay. So if you can see here, we've got config.txt file. This is the thing that Nornir is referencing. Now this is just like your little notepad where you just put in some command and you're going to paste it in. This is all that's going to happen, okay? So if I do vim config.txt file, this is just all the commands I'm going to push in. It's just nothing is it's kind of disorderly, but it's just some random command I just copied and pasted. So we can put a, a lot of changes on. So this is it. It's just basically having your text file and you could literally highlight this, copy it, and paste it in each device manually. We're going to use Nornir to effectively do that for us, okay? So, if we just go here, and all we need to do now is just simply run it. Clean, clear. <laughs> um, okay, so Python 3, run book 1, and we'll have Nornir deploy these changes. And that's us. End of the base config. So that's it. We've basically got a base configuration put in. These are the show runs here. Okay, this is all the new changes we've made to the device. That's the show run for the last device, or rather router 9. And then you can see the actual command. This is what Nornia put into that device there. And the same thing's just going to happen with all devices. You just scroll right up. Nornir's done this with every device, okay? So that is basically the setup. Now I just wanted to show you how easy it is to change this. Like I say, there's not really an awful lot to this. Let's say we wanted to add a, a new configuration. So let's make a text file called nano, um, what we call it? Random, okay? Just call it random. And let's say we'll add a new user, whatever. Username, uh, Michelle. Privilege, 15, password, IPv0, okay, and we'll just escape, or rather control, I think I was in Vim there, <laughs> okay, so let's go and edit this, um, this run book, so if we Vim, uh, run book, rather than the text file being called config text file, it's just now called random, so just change the name of that. And insert. We're now referencing a text file called random, so it's going to look into this and push out that change, and let's do the same thing again then. Okay, so Python 3 run book 1. Okay, so all that changes was just effectively um, the actual show commands, the actual real configuration change, it was just simply this, okay? Probably would have been better if I actually did a shorter show command actually, let's just do that quickly. So vim run book, and we'll change this thing way to show run, and we'll just actually, if I can go into it correctly. <laughs> Show run and we'll do a what? We'll just do a section user there. And we shall just to show you how easily this can be changed, let's just change these randomly so you can see what I mean. So let's just change this to random words. Okay, so let's change this to Dave. Okay. So now task this has got to match. Dave, and let's say we change the argument to pizza. Oh. Just so, I'm just saying that just so people don't get hung up in some of the 
the naming conventions. People think these are special names. The ones you need to worry about are things like nr.run. These are actually instructions which Nornir understands inherently, but the other ones are just kind of making up which go along. So let's run this again. Oh. Skip, insert, skip. Okay, so let's clear this and do this one final time. So Python 3 and we'll do run book 1. And as you can see, we can see that the this is the command that Nornir pushed out and then we did a little show command afterwards but you can see it's actually been changed. And of course if we go to the actual devices, we'll see all the configuration change with our show run. There's obviously a lot more configurations on it. See all this SNMP stuff, and NTP at the bottom here. That's the stuff we basically pushed out to the changes. Um, and that's true of all the devices. So like I say, if we do show SNMP um, host, we've got all these changes pushed out. Okay, though, so that's pretty much the end of the video. Like I say, we're just trying to keep it quite straightforward and simple because it's still the early stages of this little series. As we advance and go on, we're going to start looking at more important things. And not more important things, but more complex things like, I say, filtering, templates, so on and so forth. But as of now, I encourage you to try this out. It really isn't that difficult and all of the scripts will be on my GitHub. And that's pretty much it. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.